Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Spoiler Warning Podcast. This is review number 703 with a review of Duel. I'm Christopher Stacey. And I'm Stephen Miller. And if you're joining us for the first time, the Spoiler Warning Podcast is a weekly film review program. Each week of the show, we're going to dive in, debate, discuss, and argue over the latest films coming to a theater near you. Um, This week, we did three reviews for you. We had a review of The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. We had a review of The Northman. And now we're here to talk about a little film called Duel, um, which is a film that I caught back at one of the festivals. It was one of the ones I snuck in. Um, You did not see it then. You have watched it now that it's fully been released, and I have not seen it since I saw it at the festival. So we're like reversing the usual thing um, on the way this podcast goes. (laughs) Yep. But yeah, I I, um, were were you a fan of The Art of Self-Defense? I, I was, yeah. I I watched it on a plane, and I remember finding it very darkly funny. I, it was like kind of off kilter and absurd in a way that yeah. was extremely funny to me, and basically just fits Jesse Eisenberg perfectly. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I I think I was a pretty big fan of it at the time. Yeah, um, I I remember seeing that one sort of on a whim, um, and and having a lot of fun with whatever it was that I was watching, just the tone. And the absurdness of the scenes that are played totally straight, but feel like they're supposed to be very humorous. Um, so I think when I saw that come up in the festival, I was definitely like, uh, yeah, I, I have a little slot open. I'm going to throw that in there. And I was definitely, um, I don't know if I was excited, but I was, I was definitely curious and optimistic to see like what this was going to turn out. Um, did you just catch it this week on a whim or was there, was it a, a, the same connection that you were like, Oh, art of self-defense. Let me jump back in there and see if this is any good. I, yeah. I mean, I knew the art of self-defense connection. Um, I also, my, I, I have a friend who is friends with Riley Stern. So okay. I was like reminded of his existence and he was saying like, you got to check out this movie duel when it comes out. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that was also part of it. And then it just, it was playing at Alamo on a, you know, on a Tuesday night. I had to. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Um, but yeah, this, this is basically, uh, it's, it's, it's an extra review that we're throwing in this week um, because Steven caught up on the film. And uh, I have told you in the past what I, feel, what, what I think about this film, and I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I have forgotten. Yeah, so depending on how you feel about this film, this is either going to be a very interesting conversation or very quick um, you know, <laughs> one and done conversation. <laughs> so with that tease, what do you say we get this episode started, Stephen? <laughs> right, I'm ready. All right, we're going to play the trailer for Duel, and then we're going to come back and give you a review. Hi, I'm currently dying, and I would like to schedule a consultation. Sarah. Hi there. I'm sure you're familiar with the process. <laughs> When you know you're going to die, you can have yourself cloned. You have very clean skin. I like your shirt. But life has thrown you a curveball. You're not dying anymore. The duel to the death will be in approximately one year. Wait, did you say duel to the death? can't have two of you walking around forever. That would be ridiculous. Do you want to live? Yes. I don't believe you. I may be a size smaller than you. I'm going to kill her. A properly trained human body is a weapon. You're pretending to be me while I'm still alive? Even if I can't be with her, I don't want to be with you. Always use the gun if it's an option. Stab. I find guns to be boring and overused. If it's the difference between life and death, it's okay to be boring. Your mental tricks aren't going to work. Taking over my life was the plan, not stealing it. This is my life. She's not going to take it from me. What are my chances? Zero. Nothing is ever absolutely certain, though this most certainly is. I really 
value your friendship. I'll miss that when you die. Speaking of which, any updates? All right, so that was the trailer for Duel. Um, it seems like... I mean, the, this film is being sold on the actual plot itself, so I'm just going to say it. Um, yep. Basically, we live in a, this film takes place in a world in which if you are diagnosed with a terminal illness, you can have yourself cloned so that your loved ones can have a version of you that lives on after you die. Um, hopefully, the cloning process doesn't result in the same illness happening. Um, this film doesn't really address that. Uh, but uh, the problem is, if you were scheduled to die and then didn't, the world doesn't allow for two versions of you to exist um, because reasons. Um, and they force you and your clone to have a duel to the death uh, where only one of you can continue to live on in your place. Stephen Miller, what did you think of this very high concept film? <laughs> uh, I was very torn about this high concept film. I think the idea is great. And I love that the director totally commits to the bit <laughs> the whole time. Like, uh, okay, so literally the idea of cloning yourself and then fighting your clone to the death, just uh, perfect. The dual, dual pun, great, you know? <laughs> Big fan all day. The, the moment I saw the trailer and knew, I already knew Riley Stearns had made a movie called Duel and I would watch it. And when I saw the trailer and I got what it was about, I started to get excited. Um, I, I think... Its commitment to dark, 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 bleak comedy is admirable. <laughs> like, I enjoy that about it. Um, I mean, this is a movie that, you know, Karen Gillan, we both and no one else in the whole world watched The Party's Just Beginning, which was her uh, directorial debut that yeah. she also starred in. And the premise of that was basically, what if you are a person who feel your life isn't worth living and no one around you thinks their life is worth living either. And you are just kind of partying your way into death. <laughs> you know, that was at least kind of the setup of the movie, um, yeah. wherever she goes from there. And this movie kind of is like that too, where it's like, what if everything was just anemic and pointless and <laughs> your life kind of sucked and the people who love you don't really love you and the people you love you don't really love and then you have to kill yourself <laughs> um, <laughs> not kill yourself I, like, but kill yourself yeah, kill yourself <laughs> the second version of you um i thought that was all great and yet i think the big mistake this movie makes is Riley Stearns wants to be Yorgos Lanthimos and he wants to have people speak in that kind of like flat affect. The nothing matters. I am talking just to talk. This is what is going on. That worked in the art of self-defense because Jesse Eisenberg, I just believe can talk that way. Yeah. <laughs> like I believe his character and people in his dojo or whatever can interact <laughs> in that way. Here... Karen Gillan speaks that way, and I think she does a good job of it. And her character is kind of drained of life force in general. But other people in the world sporadically have that flat affect or don't just from moment to moment. It, like it, it isn't broadly applied enough to be world building the way that Yorgos does it, where it's like, oh, we are just in a universe where everyone acts this way. And yeah. it isn't narrow enough to be a revealing character trait. It's just like stilted dialogue that again like i think karen gillen does pretty well i think aaron paul is the, when aaron paul and karen gillen are training together that is the best of the movie doing that like yeah, we watched I, in the trailer them picking weapons and slowly saying like stab, what, stab. when they are doing the <laughs> slow motion in acting like we are going to play this out how this would actually happen but do it in slow motion that was fucking brilliant it was yeah, so amazing great. i loved it i would watch a web series like if quibi was still a thing where it was just like each episode was the next training session that she was going through and you never even see the duel like just <laughs> i'm just imagining a world in which it's just like somebody showing up to this class where this person is completely dead plant pan talking as though they are a, a master combat person and teaching somebody something that is just incredibly absurd. Like, the obviousness yeah. of, like, if there's a table of weapons, use the gun if it is available. It's like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of predictable. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Yeah, I, yeah, I think her and Aaron Paul, 
that that dynamic the the flatness of it the completely dry nature of the comedy is at its peak that is like what the movie wants to be doing her interacting with the doctor is like it works okay it works okay it isn't quite as funny as it wants to be and the world isn't really totally fleshed out when she is interacting with her boyfriend in this movie uh that is where the flatness completely doesn't work for me because he is at once supposed to be a kind of vibrant regular person and also being asked to deliver lines like i just do not love you the way that i used to love you and now i am with someone else there's there's just something to it that like i just didn't feel like there was control over the tone uh, like of how characters interact with each other and it really hurt the movie for me because i felt like you are kind of trying to be funny and kind of trying to be serious and this awkward middle ground the uncanny valley didn't work um if i set that aside though the only other real criticism i have is that when i think about it this movie has so many parallels to the art of self-defense i'm not totally sure what new thing other than the cloning element it is bringing to the table like yeah. the best part of this movie is the art of self-defense basically yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it is that exact thing of a unlikely character learning how to battle and coming to grips with what it means to be a person and the terribleness of humanity and it is like a satire of how we act toward each other um and those two things like they weren't enough to sink the movie like i had fun watching it i enjoyed i laughed a lot in the movie the audience liked it too um but it was just one of those things where when it ended i was like oh, okay that's all you had to say kind of feels like i don't know kind of feels like you could have done more here and i really think if it weren't for the tonal imbalance if he hadn't done that yorgos weird stilted dialogue thing i think i would have been a big fan of this movie and that just kind of torpedoed it for me yeah, I, I think for me, I, I do wonder if I would have caught this in a theater with a crowd of people, if the comedy would have worked better for me, because I did not <laughs> laugh at all. <laughs> like really? The, no, sorry. I laughed at Aaron Paul stuff, but I didn't laugh at like the actual other beats of the film because I was like, I also I was going in with like the uh, film festival description which was like, you know, blah, blah, blah in a world where you can like clone yourself so people can like, it, it was just the setup, but it wasn't the like, I don't think it went into the, you have to duel yourself to the death, but this film uh -huh. opens with somebody else's duel. Um, so, yeah. uh, so it, it is, it, it's not like it's a reveal. It is the way the film opens. Um, I mean, I guess technically there's a real reveal when you see who he's fighting, um, mm. but, it, but it's not meant to be hidden until later. But I think for me, it's kind of like what you're talking about, how so many people have the flat affect that it doesn't allow for the comedy to be there. Because imagine, like, let's take let's let's take fighting your clone out of the equation. Let's pretend like there is some sort of thing where it's like one of you gets to keep your existing work and family. Like you could create a world in which everybody loves your clone more than they love you, and that could be its own completely self-contained story that doesn't have to require all the combat stuff. But it feels like the film wasn't strong enough without adding the absurd nature of of having to kill yourself if it doesn't work out but imagine if she had that flat affect and then the other clone version of karen gillen was like really charismatic fun right. to be around and we as the audience love that other character too and now yeah. you have a nihilistic character who hates the world who is being forced to compete against somebody who loves the world and everybody else loves them and it's like that sort of dueling relationship could have been super interesting but this is like the clone comes out and i get it if for the first few hours the clone had a flat affect because it's sort of like you know like when somebody a severed person wakes up for the first time <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like you are yeah. kind of childlike and you don't understand what's happening and you have to learn to be a, a person. Um, and, and I think that there could have been something interesting there if over time she became more and more charismatic. But people talk about how much more charismatic she is, but she doesn't change her personality at all other than being kind of a dick a little bit where she's like, no, I'm totally going to kill you and just take everything because like you suck. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> but besides that, she doesn't have an actual personality of her own. Um, it's not dueling personalities. It is one personality in two bodies, um, which right. is, yeah, it, it just didn't, it didn't really work for me. Um, but but Aaron Paul is great, and I love all those scenes. Um, so it's not all bad. <laughs> no, yeah, I I, I I I am curious how you would have received it if you came into it as a comedy in the like 
in the spirit of dark comedy from the yeah. very beginning, uh, because that is definitely how it played in a theater immediately. You know, there were a lot of awkward well, laughs in the first like 10 minutes of the movie. <laughs> I knew it was doing that. Uh-huh. I got it. It's just that the performances didn't take me there. It was kind of yeah. like I, I was, and it could have been, you know, once again, festival consequence of like, you're watching a bunch of things and you're sitting down and you're like, all right, now wow me. And then it just didn't wow me in that moment. And it's like, I understood it to be humorous. I, I was yeah. I was getting exactly what I was putting down. I just wasn't laughing at it. I was kind of like, part of the problem is that like, it's so high concept that I understood it from the opening scene, what it was doing. And then now I was waiting to get there. And it was like, you're, tr- you're, you're trailing me along as though I'm supposed to be slowly picking up on something that you've flat out said in minute one. <laughs> so then it just <laughs> felt like I was kind of like, how many different ways can you say the same joke? And it just, for me, it, it just, it, the, the, as it got more and more absurd, I didn't ever cross that threshold or the event horizon of, of, of laughing. No, no, I get it. And I, I really do think the, the, the tonal thing where it doesn't commit to the world being drained of all meaning, like people are flat, but not as flat as Karen, but not all the time. I think that uncanniness is really what hurts it in that department. <laughs> because, you know, the version that you presented of charismatic duel versus depressed, flat, robotic, real her, that would be great. You know, it would be obvious in a little bit of a way, but it would be great. You know, it would yeah. be very fun. The other extreme, which I think the movie is mostly trying to be, or at least toward the end feels like it is, is, oh, nothing is, everything is meaningless no matter what, and everything sucks, and nothing will ever give anyone joy. Like, I think he's trying to do a, people are all weird, silly animals playing dress up, and isn't this absurd that one guy prefers the one who likes French food over the one who doesn't, you know, you know, like, uh, I think that's what he's going for, but he just doesn't get all the way there either and so it it leaves a lot of scenes that should be funny feeling just kind of clunky instead so yeah i feel the same way yeah and and i think part part one other problem i might have had what is just a very christopher schnazy problem um which is why can't clones exist in this world together like it'd be one thing Mm -hmm. if like there was a machine that temporarily split two people apart and when you reformed one of the personalities would like assume the other and then it's just a matter of like who wins out in this like tug of war over who remains like something like that like obviously i would need to make a jump to get there but i'd be like sure there's some like metaphysical reason why you can't both remain but if it's just like oh yeah there's a clone now it's like well give them a different social security number and a different name (laughs) like yeah it's it's there was something missing from the world if there was like a every but in the world can have a single child and a clone is like an extra child and if like, you know, they could have done something to fill out that world a little bit other than they tried to kind of make a capitalist statement of like mm-hmm. this procedure is funded because the world wants this reality series in which these people have to duel to the end if they survive. But it seems like a weird way to like, like can pay-per-view clone that many people when most of those people die anyways? Or is the idea that they're tricking people into cloning themselves early so that like there's just too many places you could go that are not what this story is doing that you would need yeah. to go into to explain the scenario that led to the beginning of the story. Yeah, and you're right. That is a very Christopher Schnazy <laughs> argument. <laughs> I don't think this movie was interested in doing that at all. And I, I was fine that it didn't do it. Yeah. But it, it would be fun if it dug into the world a little bit more. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel so just torn about this movie. Like, I I really did. I like how bleak it is. And I just, I have notes. <laughs> That's basically how I feel. Uh, cool. Yeah. Um, any, any last comments you'd like to say about this? Uh, well, let me, let me ask you this. The obvious place that we have to go to have this conversation is, uh, do you think you could kill yourself in a fight <laughs> if you had to? Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. I, I think it would depend a lot on how much they diverged and formed their own identity apart from me. Because I think at the start, if they have just, if they are me a hundred percent, you know, if this is severance version of me or something, I don't know who wins because we both predict what the other one would do. Right. So it's a (laughs) crapshoot, you know, what knowledge are you bringing to bear that they don't have as well? Um, The more we diverged, I don't know, would a happier version of me be able to kill a less happy version or vice versa? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Good existential question. I 
I want to say an original would win more often than the double because the original wants to live more because it has more um, more time built up to understand the value of living. Whereas most doubles, maybe it's like a conceptual idea of being alive, but it isn't something that they have like totally gotten used to. But see, I, I, I almost disagree in a way because the conceptual, like the, 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 the cloned version of you knows that it shouldn't be alive and it has to fight harder to be the one that wins out. Like by default, mm -hmm. the one who's been alive should be the one that gets to stay alive and the clone is... <laughs> is is less of a person in the world right it, it's it's a right. it's a uh abnormality that is disrupting the balance of the universe right so it's kind of like you have to prove that you're the one that should be there by beating out the other one in order to make it so it's like to me i think that they would have more of a reason to to fight because they have less of a, a reason to live um yeah uh, Haley Lou Richardson from After Yang called, and uh, she has issues with your statement about whether the clone <laughs> deserves to live. <laughs> uh, but that's a world where clones are allowed. And also, yeah. <laughs> spoilers, <laughs> she didn't have a choice. True. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just interesting. Would, would you clone yourself? I don't know. We... <laughs> My my wife and I only semi jokingly had this conversation about a dog that may not be with us much longer, and I said that would be creepy. So I think cloning myself would be creepy too. I think today the answer is no. But it can't creep you out, right? If if, if the true. other people aren't creeped out by it, then what do you care? You're dead. <laughs> well, I'm not immediately dead. There's true, this true. awkward transitional phase. Oh yeah, because you have to maybe train... if I could guarantee. Yeah, I have to train my clone. So so in a world where you can just trans. Like you go to sleep and when you wake up, y y you or something else is you, but in a cloned body that doesn't have whatever the mm. problem was that was about to kill you. Um, if, if this is a, a you know, <laughs> a freaking Hugh Jackman moment where you're like, one of me's alive. <laughs> it's cool. Mm -hmm. Everything is fine. But you don't have to go through the process of teaching another person to act like you. Right. Okay the code is also a liability kind of on your reputation you know like if i died that's it my repute like anything people remember about me is secure it is exactly how i left it yeah if there's a new version of me just going on living in the world going on joe rogan and saying god knows what like <laughs> steven it depends on how you die <laughs> and how true. people find you <laughs> that's, that's true if i go out death of dick long style it might be a problem <laughs> but yeah maybe maybe in this world uh there's like a, a permanent mark on the forehead that's like a roman numeral two so they know that you're not the first <laughs> yeah then, then it's like whoa 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 that's the clone steven steven's not a piece of shit <laughs> yeah now i i think another kind of interesting existential question that this movie hints at a little bit, or at least has fun with, is like, and it's kind of, again, the one I love, which I've referenced recently, too. Um, if you were able to clone yourself to have a version of you live on after you died, would you rather have it preserve your existing faults, or would you rather improve upon them in some way? Like, is it better to accurately reflect you, and so then you look identical in... Or even make it a little worse so they miss you more. <laughs> or to make the clone be even better, and then they're glad that you're dead. <laughs> We're about to veer into deeply personal territory, but I'm obviously not going to make my clone fucking better than me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <fuck> that noise. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, in a world where I suddenly start getting better, I want there to be a hard choice. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, 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 not like, it's not like, well... We had a good run, but 2.0 is a little better. Yeah. So, so basically, you being liked is more important than the other people being happy. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I feel the same way. So, so here, here's the thing, too. I mean, if I, if I flip the coin to the other side, I think conceptually, I would be more like if I was the, the recipient of the some sort of embodiment of the person that I'm losing, I think personally, I would be more accepting of some sort of virtual manifestation of them um like a hologram an ai of some sort something that i know is false and is just a representation of being able to still converse with and still interact with a person that i've lost um as opposed to a cloned version where it's like i always sort of know that's not them 
and it doesn't matter how close to them it is. I know that it's like some sort of facsimile. If I if, if it's literally presenting as a facsimile, I'm like, yeah, cool. But like if it's like a person that's indistinguishable from them, but I know was cloned, it just it that is a it requires a little bit more commitment to it than if it's like a thing that I launch. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Is, <laughs> I it, mean, it, it def- is it, is it the future version of keeping voicemails from a person you've lost or is it, this is supposed to pretend like you've never lost them. Like one of them is, is mm-hmm. a more deeply, um, it's something different and I don't know right. if I'm ready to like cross that. No, I mean, I want people to be sad. I died. <laughs> So I want them to know it. You come out of like some fucked up like, like experiment. We're like, hey, aren't you glad I'm still here? It's just like everybody's like, God damn it. Why did he clone himself? And why didn't he wait till it was possible to do it successfully? See, like that, they could have structured this movie more like that, like the classic plot of like a soldier goes off to war and is believed to be dead, and then the wife remarries, and then the soldier comes home, and she has to figure out, you know, and, and then she has to figure out, like, what do I do? Do I stay with the husband that I originally loved, or this new person that I've fallen in love for? And yeah. that would be that, that that would work here. Like, I'm believed to be dead. I've been like in a vat of acid or whatever, <laughs> and then I come back, and it's like you, still, this, everybody. you look like you were in a vat of acid. Right. <laughs> like Joker wanted you to prove your love to him. <laughs> yep. Oh. Good times. <laughs> so should we get to verdicts? Thank you for getting us back on uh, task, Stephen. <laughs> but once you're gone, I'm definitely going to talk longer with your clone <laughs> about this Great. film. Um, but uh, if you were going to even say must see, record with a caveat, wait, rental, pass the caveat, or a must avoid, what would you give it? I am giving it a recommend with a caveat um yeah it's like a little bit of a weak recommend with a caveat like there were i definitely had notes there were things about the experience that i felt like it fell flat in a way that was kind of an uncanny valley between darkly funny and unintentionally awkward (laughs) um there were things that i would do differently but i think the premise is great I think the comedy, when it works, is very, very funny. Uh, there is a sequence involving dancing in the movie that just had the whole audience laughing. Um, Especially everything. The, the context of what that scene's presenting as. Yes. Yeah, and then, of course. And then the payoff of what it's actually about. It, that, that, Definitely. I think that was a time that I did genuinely laugh. That was a that was a big laugh for me. In general, all of the battle training I think is funny, and I I like a movie that commits to the darkness a hundred percent. And this movie, it, it from beginning to end, especially in the end, it like just has the whole premise is like life sucks, nothing means anything. The end of the movie, and I kind of admire that. But yeah. caveat again, you know, like I have. I have notes. I don't think it's a slam dunk. I definitely think there are things that are totally off about the movie, and it feels like a retread of Art of Self-Defense in a way that makes me kind of wonder what his range is for future movies, but <laughs> I'm still interested in seeing more. Yeah. Um, I am going to give this a wait for rental. Um, there's definitely interesting concepts here. Um, the battle training is great, as Stephen has said multiple times, and I've said multiple times. Um, I just think it, it didn't quite land with the way that i would like to it have landed um maybe this is just a you have to see it with a crowd crowd of people that is enjoying it at the same level and then everybody sort of vibes together and being at home alone streaming (laughs) from the festival didn't uh uh help me out there um but yeah for me it is a wait for until but yeah that is going to do it for this review of duel stephen miller people want to find you throughout the week where can they do that uh, people can find me at twitter.com slash sdavidmiller or sdavidmiller.com. People can find me at christopherinlife.com or twitter.com slash christopherirl. You can find the podcast over at thespoilerwarning.com where you can get a bunch of the back episodes of the show. If you want to subscribe to the show, you can do so on Overcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever podcasts are found. Uh, if you want to know those episodes go live, you can follow us at twitter.com slash spoilerwarning, facebook.com slash thespoilerwarning, or instagram.com slash thespoilerwarning. If you want to get hold of us directly, you can send an email to fans at thespoilerwarning.com, or you can use the contact form on our site. Music for this episode will come from a track 
selected from artist.io so hopefully you're enjoying that and uh yeah that's it for this week um and we'll be back in the future maybe we'll sprinkle these out until dr strange and the multiverse of madness maybe um, yeah we'll, yeah we'll, we'll see. see if anything comes out in between those but i'm definitely excited for it um steven's at least watch spider-man now <laughs> yeah i feel semi caught up i'm not promising you wandavision but i promise i will at least read the wikipedia for wandavision <laughs> all right sounds good uh but yeah thanks everybody for listening and we'll see you in the next one bye bye